So tell me what we're dealing with. He's a twit. He's a He's doodle. A twit. Doodle. Nice. They're all twits, aren't they? I like him. They're normally really good off the leaf. His recall's good. Mm -hmm. Loves a ball. Little squeak on a little squeaky ball. And throw the ball, will come back. He'll watch you. He'll look at your eyes for, you know, waiting to be sent. As soon as you put him on a lead, he goes mad. Okay. Can't walk past the dog. You can't give him the ball. You can't throw the ball at him. You can't distract him with food. He's just totally focused on it. In fact, when we walk and we see a dog, we, be we let him off the lead because then he just ignores it. Mm -hmm. Plays with a ball and, and whatever. Um, so we tend to walk places where we're not going to come across too many dogs okay. if we can help I think it. Probably he's quite protective of Kerry. He's always kind of fucking Kerry and always kind of nervous when you go out. He's looking at you and, mm. and all that kind of stuff. So I don't know if it's a kind of protection thing. Or a little... Okay. How old is he? It'll be three in August. <laughs> So, is this what he's normally like yeah. on his lead? Mm -hmm. Is this good for him, bad for him? About normal. Straight off the bat, it would take two or three minutes to settle down. And then, Matt, as long as sit. he sees no dogs, he'll be, good he'll be absolutely fine. All right, cool. We're going to stroll down now. So, it give me an opportunity to see what your walking's like. Mm -hmm. So, if you just want to walk. Uh -uh. Oh, you're one of those dogs that kind of likes to want to walk on two legs, <laughs> given after chance. The human doodle. Can you bring a dog out, please? So if yeah, you just want to go onto the grass, <laughs> give me a chance. And what I want you to do is, when you see the dog, do what you would normally do. So I usually have the ball and... Get on the ball! Get on the ball! You should have done your What's this? Good boy. Ready? Catch. Good yep. boy. So come this way for me. So is that what he does for the ball? Yeah. It's really bad. <laughs> Let's move around a bit, Phoebe. It's not bad. No, usually he would be going nuts. It's because he wants the ball. Give me the ball. So is that what it does when he sees a dog? Yeah. Okay. So if I was on the street with him, he'd be like this. Enough. Okay. Thank you, Phoebe. All right, five out of seven days doesn't bother me too much in terms mm -hmm. of his exercise. We take him out more, to be fair, along the road. It would take him out yeah, every day. Yeah, yeah. There You're stuck between a rock and a hard place, basically. Out, so it's quite nice to, it would be yeah. quite easy to. But, but in a nutshell, it's not that you don't want to give him more, it's just we're, we're choosing the easy option for us, well, for we him. we home and we're so wound up, we're like, yeah, oh, it, it, yeah, it's, it's not. Yeah. You, you're stuck in a vicious circle. If you want to do that, as you said, you live in a nice place, but he makes it unbearable. Yeah. So we avoid that. But every time we do that, it's like Groundhog Day, it's like starting all over mm -hmm. again. If he never street walks, when you do street walk, it's overwhelming. Yeah. And then you go, oh, we're not doing that for another week. Then you introduce him to the streets. It's overwhelming. Mm -hmm. In the fields where there's nothing going on and it's just him and his ball, life's golden. Mm. Yeah. But he's not anxious there. Authority is what he is lacking. The love, he has an abundance. Nearly all of my clients are good at that bit. The fussing the dog, the treating the dog, the good boys, the talking, the loving, they're great at that. That doesn't fix dogs. That's a part of it. What he's deeply lacking is somebody to come in and go, Oi, enough. Cut that shit out. Stop whining. Stop being erotic. Stop making these dumb decisions. Let me start making those choices for you because my decisions are going to help you relax. My decisions are going to keep you safe. My decisions are ultimately going to help you relax. My decisions, I take all of that baggage away from you. But that bit starts with authority. There's a time and a place for love. There's a time and a place for shut the fuck up in the nicest sense of the word. The whining's getting less. The behavior's getting less. Uh -huh. Good boy. But notice that it's less words, more how I feel. Mm -hmm. When dogs are misbehaving, we have a tendency to start talking more. Uh -huh. 
we start telling them, it's okay, don't worry, good boy, calm down, enough, stop it. If you notice though, the people that do that are often mirroring the dog. The more the dog gets worked up, the more we start to move, the more frantic we become, the more stressed we become. Uh -huh. Stay right here. Yeah, good boy. So, one of the hardest things for him because, <laughs> nope, because he sucks at doing nothing, yeah? If I get a ball and throw it, he's excellent at chasing that. If I let him off the lead for him to go and search for all those fancy smells, he's great at that. What he absolutely 100% sucks at is doing nothing. But if I want an anxious dog to start to relax outside, if I want to start to be able to talk to somebody outside, stop at a pub and have some lunch, stop and get an ice cream down the seafront, yeah? If I want to stop and talk to somebody in the village, in order for him to sit there and stop making such a palaver, yeah? Stop barking, stop whining, stop jumping up, stop being so demanding, the things that make you go, oh, I can't do this, and walk away. Mm. In order to get him to do that, we need to practice this for no reason whatsoever. Every few minutes on a walk, we're gonna stop and we're gonna do nothing. Doing nothing is one of the hardest things for an anxious mind. If you want a dog to start to be less anxious outside, Practice doing the one thing that they actually struggle with. Not doing what they're good at, work on what they are struggling with, and that's doing nothing. So the way the figure of eight works, okay, is very similar to how we would use a slip lead. Yeah, so if I pull up, it applies pressure, but now it's not applying pressure there, it's applying pressure to the snout. But the way I use it, a little bit of pressure here, brings him into me. If he goes in front, I pull up to stop, yeah? So up to slow him down. A Little bit of pressure to lead him round. As soon as he gives into that pressure, he follows. A Little bit of pressure to bring him round, shorten up that lead. If he goes in front. The difference between this and a slip lead is I need the tiniest bit of input. A Little bit of pressure. He comes round, as soon as he's where he should be, that pressure turns off. Arm, short, oh, nearly fell over him. Arm, short but relaxed by my side. When I walk a dog, my jeans are falling down, must have lost weight overnight. <laughs> when you walk a dog, you need to walk like a boss, yeah? So we got heel and we got free time. Heel, imagine it's a bit like you're a soldier, and you've got your troops behind you and you're marching. If one of them ventured off to go, oh, butterfly, oh, flower, what do you think would happen? Right? There has to be order. There's somebody at the front, the rest are following. That's what Hill is. Mm -hmm. You're in charge. You see the dangers before him, head up, shoulders <laughs> up, and you walk like you own the street. Because in order for him to relax and follow, he has to believe you know what you are doing. Yeah? For a job well done, we can then give him downtime to sniff, to explore. We don't take that away from him, we just use that as a reward for good behaviour. Mm -hmm. So, when he understands the lead, we add some structure to the walk. Head up, shoulders up, your road, you own it, let's go. Lead round, he follows. Almost like a march, nice and relaxed. If I stop, he stops. I move, he moves. I stop, he stops. If I want to slow down and admire something, he slows down. If I want to speed up, he speeds up. A mistake that a lot of people make is they Correct the dog the second it looks at another dog. Because you're worried your dog's gonna react, the second it looks at another dog, you correct it. The problem with this is we leave the dog stuck. The dog doesn't know what to do. I can't look at the dog, I don't. Mm -hmm. And the dog just becomes almost like a shadow of a dog. Yeah. I want him to look at the dog. I don't want him to fixate on the mm. dog. So if he looks at the dog, yeah, for a few seconds and then looks away, fantastic. 
if he looks at the dog and starts to front chest up about to react mm -hmm. first thing i'm going to try to do is create a little bit of space to help him if that doesn't work and he's still about to react then i'm going to go no and i'm going to give and pop on that lead and i'm going to disagree with that yeah mm -hmm. looking's fine fixating staring fronting reacting yep. that's not fine so like that yeah is that more relaxed yeah yeah tuck in a little bit closer to him and shorten up his lead just a little bit because he doesn't need that much yeah about there that's fine okay head up shoulders up we know what he looks like we don't need to look at him we save that for indoors and walk okay. wherever you want to go okay. you walk and i'll just sit here and quietly judge or shout at me this way wherever you want to go you go this is the interesting bit for me <laughs> oh i'm trying to work out where the client's going you're easy to follow i've followed you for two and a half years <laughs> ben knows which moves i'm going to make whereas clients he, he doesn't know where they're going how's that uh, feel uh, yeah, I don't know. I get used to it, I guess. It doesn't right. feel natural, but... Remember, if you feel his nose on you... Yep. Don't hold... So you're trying to restrain. We don't restrain, okay. we correct. Okay. Head up, shoulders up. You sound hello to someone, don't overthink it. How about there, perfect. Stop the dog. When you feel relaxed. You're relaxed, everything's good. Stop that, or...? Yeah, just nudge. That's it. Okay. Say hello to Sophie. Hi, how are you? Uh, keep your tension, relax. <laughs> Ready? Breathe. Mm -hmm. What's he going to do? Let's be honest. Be a twat. Okay, I and what? I show off and then and she what? thinks I'm a loon. That's, I'm always worried about what other people are going to think Why? of. I don't know. Just down. Just wanted Who to are these other talk. people, though? <laughs> Just my nuts head. Mm hmm. Mm hmm.